The Case of the Cutesy Tchotchkes Claire and I have been friends since we were 10 years old. She is super smart. At the age of 11, she was balancing her parents' checkbooks for practice. Possessing an intellect that is both quick and able to quickly assess the big picture and spring into action, Claire is supremely competent at everything she does. She puts out interpersonal fires at work, can handle eight back-to-back client meetings a day, cooks gourmet food for her family, including vegan and gluten-free options, is a ski instructor on weekends, knits, studies Latin and Yiddish for fun, and spends her free time visiting the sick while also taking care of her elderly parents in another state. Now in her 50s, she has the same boundless energy and enthusiasm she had when she was 11. I have no doubt if she could, she would try mountain climbing. The problem is her right knee. It hurts a lot, and if she moves or puts a lot of weight on it, it starts hurting more, and she has to sit down. Sometimes it's painful to walk, and when she does walk, she has to walk slowly. Claire hates doing anything slowly. If it were up to her, she would be jogging. Her knee stands in the way of all the things she wants to do, or at least try. Lately, she's decided to try an anti-inflammatory diet, and it seems to be working. She tells me that when she doesn't eat certain foods, she feels better, and most importantly, her knees don't hurt. At the same time, the new diet may or may not be responsible for rosacea on her forehead and part of her face. I offer to do a treatment and she accepts, which is a sure sign of friendship. Claire is not into woo-woo, but she keeps an open mind as I pull out my bag of woo, tarot cards, my pendulum, my big book of all the healing modalities that I've studied. I don't usually tell my clients everything I do. I don't want to scare them off. Besides being a shaman, I am a Reiki master, and I practice body talk, acunect, which is a form of energy medicine, and do energy clearings using the five elements, and I also work with the Arcturians, a group of ninth dimensional star beings who specialize in healing. To some, this would be an indication I've gone off the deep end of woo. Yet, it works. I facilitated some profound and what some people would even term miraculous healings. I don't understand how it works or why, but I find the pursuit of the mystery fascinating. Western doctors will tell you that healing is a science, but anyone who has practiced healing or tried to heal some part of themselves knows that healing is an art. What works for one person will not work for another. There is no one formula that will have the same effect on everyone. And why it works sometimes and not others, or has one effect on one person and another effect on another, has everything to do with that person and what healing looks like for them. Sometimes the disease is in fact the cure. I'll return to that later. I take out my big book and use muscle testing to see what issues need to be brought into balance and aligned. Muscle testing is a way I can ask my client's body directly, and often the body's answers are surprising. A Western doctor would examine Claire's knee to find the source of the problem. But our bodies are not just physical. They are also mental, emotional, spiritual, and etheric. In addition, our bodies contain memories of all of our experiences, and they influence our mind, our emotions, and our physical body. If you only look at the physical problem, you may miss finding the root cause, and so the problem persists and becomes chronic. One of the things I like about energy medicine is that it's not about what I know or think needs to be healed. I ask her about her diet, and it comes up that hard cheese is affecting the rosacea on her face, and she should avoid them for a while. This is connected to her liver, which, in addition to processing food, also processes the emotions of anger and resentment. That makes sense to me. 
I imagine it's hard to be as competent as Claire is and not feel at times lonely or resentful at always being the one responsible. Claire is skeptical but politely refrains from rolling her eyes, though I can see she wants to, when I ask her to tap on the top of her head and over her heart to clear and balance what is out of alignment. But her body tells me that there's something else, something in her environment that is bugging the shit out of her. I muscle test and narrow it down to something in her bathroom. I can't get a picture of what it is, but the feeling is clear. It's like an irritant, the energy of an annoying, super itchy something, an object of some sort, a tchotchke of some kind. In case you're not familiar with the word, tchotchke is a small object that is decorative rather than strictly functional, a trinket. So I'm saying, what is in your bathroom? There's something there. Her eyes light up. My daughter decided to decorate the bathroom and she put these cutesy figurines on the shelf. I can't stand them. She says it with such vehemence. I muscle test just to be sure. Yes, it's the tchotchkes and somehow they are a part of what's affecting her physical body. To some, this sounds crazy that a tiny non-toxic object could have a negative or even a toxic effect on the body. But objects absorb and hold energy, especially when there are strong emotions involved. If you have ever clutter cleared, you may notice that the environment changes and feels different depending on the people, but also the things that we surround ourselves with. We often underestimate how much our things affect us emotionally, mentally, and even physically. Her daughter is no longer living with her, yet she's been living with the discomfort of things that subconsciously are really bothering her. We do a clearing, and for homework, I ask her to get rid of all the tchotchkes in that bathroom and to replace them with objects that she loves. A couple of weeks pass. I ask Claire about her knee. She tells me that she got rid of all the tchotchkes, and replace them with something that belonged to her grandmother that she loves. I'm always gratified when someone actually does the homework I give. It's optional, of course, but it's nice nevertheless. And Claire does this homework, like everything else, with wild enthusiasm. A lot of people, myself included, hold back parts of themselves for fear of rejection or looking foolish. We don't fully commit, especially if we don't have any guarantee about how it will turn out. Claire reminds me to hold back less and to be braver, even when doing little things. This is one of the gifts of Claire's healing to me. She tells me her knee is feeling better and that being on this new anti-inflammatory diet, she can now feel the effect of eating gluten. She feels so much better, and that has changed what she wants. In the past, both of us have gone on diets in order to lose weight, in part to look better. But this way of eating was about feeling better. And the relationship between food and what made her feel good or not good is so clear and so unmistakable that she no longer wants to eat the way she had before. It isn't about resisting what she wants. It's about doing what makes her feel good. And her knee, rather than being the enemy, is actually her ally, she tells me. For whenever she does something, her knee gives her immediate and direct feedback. She talked about her knee with such affection and gratitude. I wish for a second that I had a bum knee to make things as clear to me. But then I remember this is what our bodies are always doing, giving us immediate, constant feedback. The problem is we don't pay attention. Instead of recognizing our body's messages, we try to sedate the messenger. So this is what I mean by the disease sometimes being the cure. Claire's knee had to slow her down against her very strong will in order to get her to pay attention. Claire's knee helped her pay attention to her own needs, to caring for herself and feeding herself with the same attention that she gives 
to her family and those in her community. You may say, what kind of cure is that if her knee still hurts her? Healing should be about taking away the pain and the problem. Otherwise, it isn't true healing. But this is what I mean by healing looking different for different people. Of course, Claire or anyone would want a pain-free knee. But right now, the pain in her knee and the fact that she is willing to listen to the feedback that it is giving her is affecting a realignment in her relationship with herself and how she cares for and feeds herself with food, but also with the things she surrounds herself with. Her knee is teaching her to align with her body's wisdom rather than to fight it. Perhaps pain is a kind of apprenticeship for Claire, and in time, when she's learned to care for herself as fiercely and as competently as she does everyone else, the pain will subside. That's my working hypothesis. But I want to talk about something else. Perhaps only I noticed. She originally complained about the rosacea on her face. When I looked, I could see the red that she was talking about, but I had to look hard to see it. Over the course of the next month or so, I'd see photos she'd posted on Facebook, and in every one of them, it seemed that something had shifted. It was hard to pinpoint. It was as if she was used to striving and pushing, and suddenly she took a deep breath and relaxed. Something had settled and softened in her face and in her whole being. She looked more like herself. Her enthusiasm and joy for living radiated out of her face. She was beautiful. In Hollywood movies, there's a moment I call the walking down the stairs moment when Julia Roberts or her stand-in makes her Cinderella-like entrance to the ball and everyone stops for a moment and stares in awe and appreciation of her beauty. It happens a lot in the movies, not so much in real life. And the transformation, if it is talked about, is usually that of a young woman, a teenager who was on the brink of adulthood. It wasn't something external that changed, but whatever internal change or alignment had occurred, it was noticeable. This was the other gift of Claire's healing. It gave me hope that someday I too would come into that kind of beauty, the kind that radiates from the inside out, the kind of beauty you radiate when you're deeply, fully, and truly who you are with wild enthusiasm. I'm Suzanne Legrand, and you've been listening to The Shaman's Notebook. For more insights and adventures into healing, subscribe below and visit me at SuzanneLegrand.com. <laughs>